examine the breath breath first search and we're going to use route finding as our example for demonstrating how breath first search works uh, and this is a nice little illustration uh, showing uh, how that works and the BFS search basically um, as this diagram shows goes out level by level examining as opposed to like a depth first search that would kind of go down uh, till it found the bottom then go back up and work its way back down each route this one goes side by side um, just go really level by level is a good way to think of it uh, you know we're going to use it with a graph and you look at the, your starting point and then anything that's connected to that starting point um, one level out we look at that then we look at two levels out then we look at three levels out and uh, typically we're searching for some kind of destination our goal um, and so uh, for this example i'm going to use this we have this map of romania for some reason um, this pops up a lot as some professor must have used it somewhere down the road and it's uh, popular though to illustrate uh, bfs and kind of ai classes um, you'll see it a lot in the literature uh, and so anyway i went ahead and marked it up with these uh, numbers in red represent the vertices uh, you know kind of arbitrary but um, you have it helps to kind of give them a number so that we know what we're talking about here and so uh, if you see we're starting at zero and we're actually going to uh, go our goal is to get to bucharest 12. and so if starting at zero uh, you notice that zero has like if you're going to go one level out we have one two three um uh, edges if you will vertex vertices that are connected one level out and that's uh, vertex one four and three uh, and so that's what you see right here this is the result that we should get um, when we run this algorithm and I'll, I'll show you the code momentarily uh, and then the next set that should pop up will be two five eight and nine because then we take each of these individually so we'll look at one and you see how one is connected to two so that's why that's there and then we look at three that's connected to five and that's why that's there and then we'll look at a four and that's connected to eight and nine so that's what that is and so on until we get to uh, our goal state and then it kind of ends there all right so um uh, let's look at some of the code for how this is implemented okay uh so you're gonna you want to create a graph and this is a very basic graph class that we're going to work inside of um, we have this V variable that's representing the vertices. Um, we have this array that's holding link list. Uh, so each spot in this array should represent a vertex in our graph and it will hold all the edges that are connected to that vertex. For example, spot zero in this, I'll keep going back to that Arad location, uh, spot zero should have three edges that are saved uh, in its link list in its spot here uh, in our constructor we just um, go ahead and initialize our array uh, each spot so that uh, we don't get any null pointer exceptions um, uh, and then we have this add edge class the add edge class is going to add that edge to to the array of link list right so you add them one at a time and if I show you the actual code here this is what it looks like when we're we're adding them right and so um that first one like i said had spot zero had three different edges uh don't worry about these uh weights this is mileage or kilometers actually that we'll get to in a future tutorial when we want to take into account um cost per step uh so anyway um let's go back to this and so uh that's how you add edges though uh i just wanted you to see that what that looks like when you add the edge um, you, you give it the source vertice and then the edges for it right and all right so let's go let's now so that's all there is for our graph we have edges and we have our vertices and in the bfs uh, function this is the actual function the bfs we you always use a q because uh, the q lends itself to the bfs in the way that it takes in and out our vertices. Uh, remember, cues are first in, first out, which is perfect because we're going to take in 
uh, one, yeah, we're, you know, in our example here, we're going to take in zero. We'll spit it back out, and we're going to examine its edges, one, three, and four. Uh, then we'll, you know, first one in was one, so then we'll take that one out. And that's why we get two as our uh, next edge that's, that's added in there, if that makes sense. Uh, and, and then, the, you know, the, again, the first one in, first out. And so um, we'll, you just keep on uh, taking them out in that order. And that will lend itself to a BFS search. It's exactly the a depth first search is exactly the same, except you just change the data structure from a queue to a stack, which is kind of interesting because of the way that they're accessed and removed. Um, anyway, enough on that. Uh, but you're going to use a queue, and uh, then we're going to use a array list that's going to we're calling this scene. A lot of times in algorithms, you'll see it called uh, visit it. Same thing. Uh, it's just going to hold the uh, vertices that we've already taken a look at, that we've already examined. Uh, so to start out with, we're going to add the source to our queue, uh, that S right there. So we'll go into this while loop, and while there are still things in the queue, still vertices, we're going to keep going. Um, and so first thing we do is remove. So in our example here, we're, we only have one thing in the queue at this point that gets saved to this current um, in variable and we go ahead and look has this been examined yet nope so we'll come in here we'll add it now because we are examining it so let's add it to the examine the scene uh, array list and is it equal to the destination no it's not uh, so we can ignore this um, if it was then we would we would print out the scene array list because that's going to hold our um, our vertices that we've examined and then we we just return to, to kind of get out of this uh, method. Um, all right, so this next page here is really a continuation. So those two brackets you see are the ending brackets for this if statement and this if statement, just so you're not confused by these. And then we have a for loop. This is the last part of the BFS search. And this for loop is going and looking at the current um, vertice and grabbing its edges. And so we're going to look at all the adjacent edges and first we'll see if they've been seen um, at, you know, using our example of a rod uh, early on in this loop. Nope, they haven't been seen. So we would add all three of them. So that would be adding the, you know, the one, three and four to uh, the queue. And then we would kind of work our way back up. We would extract um, one, right, because that was a, the first one at it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and and then we just start that process all over again. Uh, has it been examined? No. Let's add it to the examine list. Is it the destination? No, and so on until we get to twelve, and then that would, yep, we found it, and then we print it out and we return. Um, so so that's it. And uh, like I said, the the only thing that I didn't show you are all these edges that I added. Uh, I'll share all this code by the way. Um, and then uh, just a call to that function with the source and the destination. And so you can see, I'll just kind of show you. Um, there we have it. So that shows us each of the um, vertices up until we found uh, our destination. Uh, so, so this is interesting to see. This is how a BFS search works. But what would be more interesting is what I want to show you in the next tutorial on how to actually use this information. So we will use this exact information, but pick out the path that is the shortest to get to 12 instead of showing all. Um, and I'll show you how you can do that in the next tutorial. Uh, I hope you like this. Please let me know if you have any questions.